Moolah Law is brought to you by the nonprofit credit counseling agency, Credit Canada. If you spend any time in a car, an accident can happen. They do happen. They happen all the time. Even if it's a minor fender bender, it can have an impact on your insurance rates. So what can you do to be better prepared? Should you be involved in a car accident? We hope this is news you never need to use, but it will provide you some comfort um, just to have some context on this topic. Morgan Roberts is the insurance sales director at ratehub.ca. She joins us from Curtis, Ontario to talk about claims and what to do. Hello there. Hi, how are you? The caveat, auto insurance is provincial. Things can differ based on where you live. Um, that said, what should Canadians do as they pull their car over to the side of the road, assuming it's an accident that isn't life or death? Yeah, that, that's kind of a key there. If the car is movable, attempt to move out of harm's way. So if you're in the middle of the road, attempt to get to the side or into a close parking lot. Um, if it is, if there are major injuries, stuff like that, of course, don't move the car, just call 911 right away. But if you can move the car and no one's injured that you can see, get photos of the car, talk to the other person, get their insurance information, driver's license number, uh, their vehicle plate number, and any details of the accident you can remember. It's always best to attempt to write them down so that you remember right as it's happened um, what you were doing, if you were moving or not moving, um, just any details. You can remember who was in the car, that kind of stuff. What advice do you have for people about the emotional dynamic? So I have been in two accidents, one which I caused and one which was caused by another. Both of them were very upsetting, but for obviously for different reasons. What, what advice do you have on navigating that part of it? That's the hard part. I, to be honest with you, I was in an accident last year and I was shocked how overwhelmed I got as well with the emotion. Mm. Your best bet is to just stop, take a few breaths and realize as long as no one's hurt, th this is going to be okay. Insurance will fix it. Everything is going to be fine in the end. You just have to take a minute and calm down. There's no point in yelling at the person that caused the accident or if you're the person there's no, there's no point in playing the blame game and just making people more upset. It's already high stress, high emotional time. Just try to keep calm and realize that insurance will help you out of this, but not to escalate. How would you recommend people think about the difference between at fault and no fault it, from an insurance perspective? I know from a legal perspective, it's different because in my case, that second accident, someone ran a red light and I actually went to their court appearance where they were let off from running <laughs> this red light and it made my blood boil. I still have the paperwork. It was probably 20 years ago that it happened and I was insane about it, even though I got you know, coverage for the car that they totaled. But tell us about that distinction. And I know there's some regional nuances, but how 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 do you think about it today? Yeah, the new fall insurance, it just means that you'll deal with your own car insurance company for claims and navigating through that process. The no fault, uh, it's when a reimbursement for any loss comes from your insurance company instead of if me and you get into an accident, your company doesn't pay for me and my company doesn't pay for you. I see. And uh, I know that some insurers have like collision centers. H how does that work? Is that common? Well, you just go to the collision reporting center in your city. Okay. Which is not run by an insurance company. It's run by what? The police? I think it's run by, I'm not a hundred percent sure. So, but I think it's run by police. So you just go to the collision reporting center, tell them what happened. They'll take photos of your car and they'll fill out a report for you. Gotcha. And you have this car, you call your insurance company, some call center person who's used to dealing with these calls all the time will collect a whole bunch of information. Um, how long do these claims tend to, to um, take to process? I can't really give a timeline on how long they take to process. If you call your broker, we get on it right away. So we start working with the insurance company as soon as possible to get on it so that we can get your claim closed as soon as possible. There are different factors like 
Um, if you're looking like when the car has to be fixed, it depends on how long it takes parts to get in that kind of stuff, but the adjuster will get in contact with you as soon as possible. Everything how moves would, quickly. How would you manage people's expectations for what that coverage will, uh, will include? Because I know when it happened to me, uh, I had a relatively new to me car and I was still out at least five grand based on, you know, the age and stage and whatever. And I had no idea. I'd never been in that situation before. If they offer you a payout, um, it's usually on the blue book value. If it is a brand new car though, when you do buy insurance, if you buy a brand new car or lease a brand new car, you should make sure that you have a waiver of depreciation on there. That will hold the value of your vehicle for however long the waiver is good. It depends on which insurance company you're with, but you can always try talking to them when they give you that number as well to, uh, to say if it's enough or not enough, why it's not enough, and have that conversation with the adjuster. When we talk about any insurance product, there's like a base level, and then there can be other features. You know, with home insurance, you're talking about here's the value of my contents and all those sorts of things. What are some of the variables as someone is pricing insurance and going through that path with the going down that path with a broker that they should be aware of with either additional things they can add on or things that would um, make the coverage more or less expensive? Well, you can always add on. So what you have to have is liability. So that is what you need to drive a car in Ontario. Okay. Then if you are leasing or financing, you do need collision and comprehensive. I also do recommend collision and comprehensive to anybody who if, if your car's stolen tomorrow and you don't have comprehensive on it, no one's going to fix, like no one's going to replace your car. That's what that coverage does. Mm. So you'd have to be okay with waking up tomorrow and the car being gone and you being financially okay to repurchase a car as well. So you have to look at your financial status and how much you use the car as well. Um, you can always add on accident forgiveness. So if you are in an at-fault accident, it protects your driving record. I always recommend if you qualify for that to have that added on to your policy. So you can add that on. You can also add on use of a rental vehicle. There, there's all sorts of variables. If you lease your finance, there's less variables because you have to have some coverages on it. But it's always best to talk to your broker to go over all the different coverages that are available and different situations that you might be in that would require different coverages. One last question before we go. I'm one of those drive it into the ground people. <laughs> so I will have the car. I drove my grandmother's 1968 Valiant for years, then my mom's Tercel. I have had new cars, but I literally think about it. I'm going to drive them till their very, very last breath. Yeah. At what point should people take off the collision coverage? Like at what point is the cost benefit um, make less sense? Well, you'd have to look at your deductible. So there's a few variables with that. You have to look at your deductible to see if your deductible is a thousand and you know that that car is only worth $300 now, <laughs> it's probably not worth it. Um, I don't like to give a year. Like I don't like to say if the car is 10 years old or 15 year olds, years old, I have a 10 year old car right now. I keep collision and comprehensive on it because if I got into an at-fault accident, I would need my car replaced. Um, I, I'm not in the market to buy a new car. So I look at it that way. My car is worth more than my deductible. So as long as you're comfortable paying the deductible, but you also have to be comfortable if you take it off, it is a gamble. Mm. You might not have a car tomorrow if you get into an accident. 10 year old car. It's just getting started. Just getting warmed up. It's just yeah. knowing the roads <laughs> 10 years. Come on. It's still pretty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they haven't changed the model design too on my road. No, it gets so me to A and B. Yeah. yeah. Morgan, thank you so much for your time today. Anytime. Thank you for having me. Morgan Roberts is the insurance sales director at ratehub.ca. Uh, she was here to talk about what happens if heaven forbid you ever get in a car accident and some things to think about as you review your insurance policy.